Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, BodyLogics, the Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men, 20% off. Online stretching programs with Eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it. So it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have it, to get exclusive offers to your sport. And it's definitely worth worth it. So do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20, takes 20 seconds. So go do it and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh he's the co-founder and he does a lot of live streams on Instagram at uh, at Living Sisu and with a bunch of elite athletes and you learn a lot from like the athletes' determination, the resiliency, everything to what me made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So Go on. I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On the Spot Sports. I'm Jack, and today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest, the goalie mindset guy, Pete Fry. Pete is a mental performance coach for goaltenders who knows a lot about the position of goaltending and the mental aspects it takes to become an elite hockey goaltender. He has also written a book called Goalie Mindset Secrets and 90% Mental as well as creating the Goalie Mindset Power Program. And I've, I've personally saw, been on your YouTube channel, Pete, and did your pregame visualization for the last three games, and I'm 3-0. So thank you for, uh, for having that, for putting that up on YouTube. And uh, I know it's going to be a fantastic episode, and everyone's going to gain a lot of knowledge from this episode. So welcome to the show, Pete Fry. Thanks a lot, Jack. I'm excited to be on here with you. Very excited. And, and congrats on your success as those Three sh- shutouts there. Yeah, no, yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Like, I appreciate you putting it on because, like, you're the reason that I'm doing so well. And, like, it just, it really helps, like, especially when you get in, like, that mental, that visualization state. Like, it really, like, clears the mind and makes sure everything goes, goes silent, like you said in the, in the video. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, I'm, I'm excited to, excited that, that I can help. Yeah, absolutely. So like, how, how have things been for you? Like, I'm sure like this time, like we were talking before this, like you, you're super busy now. So like, how's everything going with your clients and just being super busy during this time? It's, it's great. I really enjoy it. Uh, things are in the swing of things. You know, it was different this time of year, 12 months ago, just because, uh, because of COVID. And there was a lot of, a lot of clients that I work with that couldn't even play if they were in the, the SGHL or the Manitoba Junior Hockey League. And there's a lot of leagues that are on anyone in Ontario couldn't play at all in the Ontario Hockey League. So, uh, and even guys that played, uh, you know, college or junior, their seasons got cut short, but it's great now. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I think for every, who is it? The famous uh, country singer Garth Brooks says this for every, for every curse, there is a blessing and for every blessing, there is a curse. And so I think no matter what, we got to pull the good out of what happened with COVID and, and learn, learn from it to be stronger and just move forward yeah I think that was the main thing last year is just to get something positive out of it even though like it was a pretty negative time bad time with for everyone but like just to take those little things that were positive out of it and just turn in turn it into a blessing on in disguise like that's that's what I got the most out of it it was just getting there you had so much time to get better as well like you just you had time to spend time in the weight room if you had like a home gym, like even just like you could create weights and stuff to lift, like you could create, uh, start journaling, like yeah. visualizing like your saves and all that. When you do get back on the ice, like there was so much that you could do during that time to help yourself get better when you, when you are able to get back on the ice. 
hundred percent. And, and, you know, it, every time it comes down to, you know, how we look at it and, and how we view it. And, and there's always a choice. There's always an opportunity. Example is one of my clients who's with the, the Carolina hurricanes organization, Beck warm about two weeks ago, he calls me like, Pete, I'm I'm going from, cause he was, he was with the Chicago wolves, right. In your, your, your neck of the wood there. And he's like, they're, they're sending me to the East coast league. You know, we have a pretty light schedule, so they're going to send me. So I get a bunch of games in and stuff. And he said, I'm super excited. I'm super excited. And, and what, what a fantastic attitude, because a lot of guys can say, oh, man, I can't believe I'm going down to the East Coast League. And, and they could focus on that. But Beck choose to focus on the opportunity that he has, that he's going to get a lot more games in. And it's going to be much better for his career, which it will be, which it will be, unless he went down there with a negative attitude, which he didn't hit a totally positive attitude. Yeah, exactly. And just, just like, just like Beck, like you got to have that positive mindset. Like it, if you go in with a negative, with a negative attitude, like you're just not gonna, you're not going to be in the moment, not going to be surrounding yourself with around like the good times. And you're not going to be able to focus on your development at that point. And just, whereas Beck like is focused on, his development and like that's best for his development right now especially since the wolves have a lighter schedule right now and he's yeah. just he's getting t- playing time so that that also helps boost his confidence and helps helps his development a little bit yeah it's been yeah it's been fantastic he's got a few games in already he's loving it he's loving it a little, little warmer than chicago there too i think in uh virginia beach <laughs> yeah right right on the right on the east coast where uh you could go, you could go to the beach probably anytime you want yeah yep yeah, absolutely. So uh, I want to start things off here with like, can you give like our viewers a little background information on yourself? Like what made you become a mental performance coach for gold tenders and like how you got to where you are today? Yeah, for sure. No, I, I'd love to. Um, I guess if, if, if I look, if I go all the way back to, to what, when I played, when I was a goaltender, when I played myself and when I look back, I, I didn't, I wasn't that strong mentally and I, I can use a few different examples. Uh, one example is I was 15. Uh, I was in grade 10. I'm in science class and I was playing midget, first year midget hockey as a 15 year old. And I get called to the principal's office. I'm walking down there and thinking, why did I get called to the principal's office? I get there and the principal was, hey, your dad's on the phone because there was no cell phones back then. There was no cell phones. This is in the, like the, the, mid, the mid 80s or, or, or early 80s, actually. Anyways, he's like, yeah, it's, it's uh, the Portland Warhawks called. They're going to bring you up to the Western Hockey League. I got to come get you. We got to get you a suit because, you know, I didn't have a suit. They had to get me a suit and take you to the airport. They're going to pick you up there. So he does that, picks me up, uh, gets me a suit, takes me to the airport, fly to Calgary where the team met me because they were on a three-game Alberta road swing, Calgary, Lethbridge, and Medicine Hat. And so I, I, I get there. I, I meet the guys on the bus. I remember being really just intimidated because I just, I, I just remember being super intimidated. I don't think it was like the best impression that that I left with with everyone there and then and then we're we're going to our first game and and they said when they called me up they said don't worry you're you're not going to play because 15 was a little young for the western hockey League. Yeah. there was guys there 18 19 20 and I'm sure some players there that probably ended up playing for the Chicago Blackhawks that were on the team then but there's like Cam Neely if you remember him uh yeah. guys like that really really good good tough team and and so our first game is against Medicine Hat it, of course, it's, it's in Medicine Hat, and I, I get out there, I'm sitting on the bench, I'm sitting on the bench, and the, the puck drops for the game, the other goalie's playing, and about 30 seconds into the game, a player on the other team runs through our goalie's crease and kind of runs over our goalie, and he's like lying flat on the ice, and I'm like panic attack on the bench. The, the coach looks over, he, Ken Hodge is his name, was a coach of the, the Portland Warren Hawks at the time, he's got this big coke bottle glasses he looks over at me very intimidating he's like peter get ready you're gonna go in and i'm like oh my god and i i was like so scared like if people ask me when were you the most scared in your life was it when you're on on the plane and they had all these uh uh ambulances on the sides of the runway when you were landing and i was like nope not even close not even close it would have been it was that time when i was sitting there on the bench and I was about to go in and, and I remember like so scared. I, I looked around and, and I saw the PA guy, you know, the, the guy that does the announcing at yeah. ice level. And I wanted to grab the microphone from him to just say, Hey, if anyone in this building has a goaltending experience, 
come on down to ice, ice level. And by that time, the fans are chanting. They're looking at me chanting, sib, sib, sib. That's what they say, right? Yeah. And I'm getting up, getting ready to go in, just about to go in. And the other goalie gets up and he, he shrugs it off and then he continues to play. But there was a huge problem with that when I look back on that is when the other goalie got hurt and the coach gave me the, the nod, I should have been, what, what I teach my guys to do now when that happens, because it happens to every goalie at some point, yeah. you're going to go in, is stand tall right away, shoulders back, chin up, look up, breathe deep, and then run, run a movie in your mind. Run your own little mini pregame visualization for a few seconds. See yourself making a glove save, a breakaway save, a save on the shot from the point through traffic, and smile if you need to smile, and move powerfully, and then go in the net. Be excited to go in there. And the thing that I learned when I look back there is that the difference between nervousness and excitement are really just images in your head. That is the main, main difference. And so that was one circumstance that I look back on. The other one was after my, my, my year as a 16 year old. And so as a 15, I got brought to Leicester Hockey League, went back, uh, finished a year off in minor hockey as a 16 year old. They said, you're, you're going to come to training camp. You're, and I was expected to play in the BC Hockey League that year. And so I went to training camp, had a good training camp. And at the end of camp, they're like, no, nope, we're, we're going to keep you. You're going to be our backup goalie. This is for Portland as a 16-year-old. And they said, you're not really going to play that much. And I ended up playing 39 games that year. Had, you know, play, play, played well. And at the end of the year, I was ranked in the top five goalies to get drafted the next year into the National Hockey League draft. Went home in the summer. This is between 16 and 17. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm awesome. Like, I am so good. That's what I was thinking, right? I'm so good. Yeah. And I'd go play like summer hockey with like my buddies. I'd be like, oh, those guys are brutal. Like just like the, the, the worst. All of a sudden I had this terrible attitude. I didn't know why. And at that time, agents were trying to secure me to be their clients. And so Donnie Meehan, who was one of the, the biggest agents in the game at, at the time, I think he was Curtis Joseph's agent. And he flies out to flies out to see me, meet with my mom and dad. And he, he signs me. And he's like, you know, Pete, you should go, you should go. I guess some of my other clients like Russ Cortnell and names, a couple other names are going on the ice. Uh, and you should be going out with those guys and practicing. I'm like, nah, nah, I'm good with my, my, my buddies or whatever. Anyways, bottom line is, uh, what, what do I realize when I look back? Because I went back as a 17 year old. Not only did I not get drafted, when you get into the general manager's bad books, they trade you to Brandon, Brandon Weekings, which is like right on the other side of the country yeah. in Canada. They're really cold there. And so at the end of the year, I got traded to Brandon, uh, did not get drafted, had a terrible year, played 31 games, eight less than the year before, had over 50 penalty minutes, which is a lot for a goaltender, especially with only 30 games. And yeah, I, I, I had basically played myself out of uh, being drafted that year, played myself out of a, a pro career that year and quit hockey for a little bit because I was so, I was like basically depressed. And then waited, eventually I got traded to Victoria, worked hard, came back. I had no idea what I was doing, but uh, at 19 years old, I had a great season in Victoria and I was drafted. I got, get a, I get a call one day and it's, it's uh, during the NHL draft uh, next year. And it's Marshall Johnson, director of player personnel for New Jersey Devils. He's like, Peter, welcome to the New Jersey Devils. Welcome to the National Hockey League. We're excited to have you as part of our organization. We'll see you at training camp in September. Look forward to seeing you. And then, then he hung up, I hung up. My first thoughts, Jack, were, I don't have a chance. I don't have a chance because what I had done, what I had done that time, I played the whole, what I call, I got into the fan mindset. And this is yeah. one thing that I really work a lot with the goaltenders. I got into what's called the fan mindset. I studied every NHL team. And I studied who they had for goalies. And I thought, you know, if Toronto drafts me, I can play there. I can beat those guys. If this team drafts me, I can play there. And then when it came to New Jersey, I thought there's no way they had too many goalies. They, who they had, they had like Sean Burke, Chris Terreri, uh, uh, Craig Billington, Kirk McLean. Their number one and two were Alan, Alan Chevry and, and, and Bob Soba. You may not have heard of those guys, but anyways, they, they were really good at the time. And I just thought there's there no chance. And so my, my work ethic after being in phenomenal shape, I was an all-star in the Western Hockey League the year before. I, I go to training camp in New Jersey. And this is kind of how it went. After we did our fitness testing, the next day, the head coach of the New Jersey Devils, uh, he later coached Toronto. 
um, oh, I'm trying to think of his name. Very, very nice guy. Kind of, kind of had red, red, red type hair. Uh, the, the name just escapes me right now. Anyways, he pulls me aside. He goes, do you know who had the lowest score on a VO2 max test? Do you know who was in the worst condition of anyone here at training camp? And that was basically my whole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was me. It was me. <laughs> Anyways, and that was a total controllable, total controllable that, that, that I had was in my control to show up in great shape. That's one of the other things I work with guys on is, you know, focusing on the things that you can control because there's always going to be opportunities. And, and I believe, I believe the goalie does the right things. If the goalie stays in what's called the athlete mindset, stays away from the fan mindset. If the goalie, you know, does his pregame visualizations, works, works on his skills, skills, technical skills are so important to work on them, but also works on his physical skills, maybe like with Maria Mountain or so, something like that. You know what I mean? Like working on that as well too. And, um, you know, works on the mental skills. I believe that they, they, they can play pro. They can play pro. Um, may not be in the National Hockey League, you know, because sometimes the NHL will say, well, you know, we're only going to take you if you're six foot one or six foot two yeah. or something like that. Uh, although I believe goalies can dominate the National Hockey League at five foot 10, five foot 11. I still believe that they, they can dominate. They'll, they'll, they'll prove it time and time again. They just need the opportunity. Um, but I believe anyone could play pro if they if they really put their mind to it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love, hope I answered like, your question. Yeah, you did. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I love that story because like, like it went from like that you like weren't, you were very scared at that one point and then like it took a toll on you for the next few years to like, to like, to stop your progress a little bit there and stop your development. But then you got back on track and then, but you still had those negative thoughts and like, just to like realize that like a lot of people don't realize that when they do think like that, which is, which is not good, especially because like you want to believe in yourself. You want to have that, like you, that you belong there. You belong at the level you want to play. And it's just like, you, you realize that and like, you really took a, took a turn with it and try to try to change it for the better. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And so after that, after not getting drafted, I came back, played as an overage in Victoria, went to University of Calgary, played there for a couple of years. It was really good. Like our second year, we were the number one in the country. Uh, I, I blew my knee when we went to the uh, final four, like the frozen four, but the Canadian version of yeah. it in there. And so the next year on like a, a, on basically on one leg, I went down to play in the coast in the East coast league. Uh, but I was like, I, I was, I was, I, I, I couldn't, I, I, I came back at Christmas and, uh, uh, but then I did go the next year. I played in Sweden for a year. And, uh, and then after that, I was, I was done. I was done after that. But, uh, but if, if I look back, if I, what's the biggest thing, like, could I have had a long career in the national hockey league? I believe if I had had the strong mental, mental mindset, I believe so a hundred percent. I believe that is the biggest, biggest difference. Cause that is the software that runs everything that you do. And, you know, if, if it's a, if it's a bad software, it doesn't matter how good the computer is, it's not going to operate well. And I believe the same with the goaltender as well, too. Yeah, absolutely. And I, that's what I want to get into for this part of the show is like the minds, the mental mindset of the game. Cause like, what are some of like the main challenges that you see your goalies face and other goalies face about the mental side of the game? And like, what are some of like the good ways to ease the mind and help, help you get your mental mindset to a positive game, to a positive mindset and stay sharp? Oh, there, there, there's a few, there, there are a few that I find uh, pretty, pretty common. One is, one is getting anxiety before a game, like lots of anxiety before a game. And, and if you go back in the days of even like, like, really in the olden days of where goalies before they even wore a mask or when they first started to wear a mask, there was, was it, was it Glenn Hall? He, he was a really good goaltender, Chicago Blackhawk, right? He was a phenom. Yeah. Was it him or who was it? There's was a goalie that used to throw up before every game. That yeah, I, I think it was, I think it was Hall. I, I've, yeah, I, I think I've heard about that before. Yeah. Yeah. Throw up before every game. And, and so as far as anxiety goes and nervousness, a way that goalies can combat that is through pregame visualization. And let, let's take, take it away from goaltenders and look at, look at famous artists like singers. And you look at, you've heard of Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. There's another one. Uh, 
I can, the, the names, the names are escaping me today. It'll, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. But there's another artist that is, who's well known, but not, not as well known. And so Bruce Springsteen, before a concert, he gets like this, this type of energy or, or the, this feeling within him before he goes out on stage. And that, that energy that he gets, he turns it into pictures of the fans cheering for him and chanting his name and him, you know, pumping off great songs. And then there's another artist, Carly Simon, who, who's fa fairly popular, not as popular as Bruce Springsteen. And before concerts, many times, the, she will get the same energy, but that energy that she gets, it then uh, turns into pictures in her head of her not being able to perform, her choking on stage, the fans booing her. And so she's running all those negative images on her head. And there's been many times when she has not performed specifically because of that. So take that as a goaltender. You get that, you know, before a game, the mind can go to pictures of you making saves, an all-star performance, you getting star of the game. It can also go to you getting pulled, the coach telling you you played a terrible game, uh, not making saves. And if it goes to that, then it, it'll, it'll create anxiety. If it goes to not making saves, the coach yelling at you, getting pulled, it'll create anxiety. And you'll do whatever it takes to prevent that. And you could still be successful. It doesn't mean you're not going to be successful, but you're going to be successful along with a whole lot of anxiety. And I think that's how I was a lot when I played. I would, I would, when I was successful, I like my, my anxiety, I had so much anxiety when, when I played and that was just negative pictures in the head. And that's why I do pregame visualization. So my, my, that's one of my purposes is that I can, I can totally bring down anxiety and turn it into more of excitement and goaltenders by doing a, you know, see yourself making a glove save, a breakaway save, a save on a shot from the point through traffic. There's a rush get to the far blue line, to the red line, player skates over your blue line, fires it, you make a nice blocker save, you redirect it exactly where you want to redirect it, and you feel powerful, you feel like the most confident person in the building. But just like all of a sudden, by hearing that, uh, I'm not sure if you, you could picture it then, but these great images form in your head. And, yeah. and you think of it, when do you play your, when, when do you feel the most confident as a goalie after you've made a few saves? In a row so this is to bring that same feeling before you even make those saves yeah absolutely and like i like for me personally like two two three years ago like i didn't really i didn't do vi pregame visualization but like and like there'd be some games where you'd have a great game some games where you'd have a have a bad game where you can't stop a puck like games where you give up like six, seven goals. And then you start thinking about that the next game. And then you're saying, oh, I gave up six to seven goals last game. Like, what do you think is going to happen this game? If you keep thinking like that, your goals are going to go in, you're going to end up giving up six or seven goals. But like ever since like the pregame visualization, like you just, I can just see pictures in my mind of just me making saves and having like that all-star performance, like you said. And it's just, it just really helps like the mindset calm down a little bit especially like when you're racing with those emotions and those those like negative negative energy negative thoughts like it really like just clears your mind and like is able to get you settled into the game into the present moment yeah love it love it and, and that's another one when you talk about common challenges that, that, that goaltenders may have and that the, what's called mental time travel so you're in a game you don't make a save the puck's about to be dropped and instead of just being in the moment, the mind is back at what just happened. Yeah. Right. Typical example, talking about back, go going back to back warm when he was playing for tri cities and he was phenomenal, like phenomenal for tri cities, he broke the single season, save, single season save record. One game they're playing against the Portland winter Hawks and Portland had a very good player. I forget who it was on their team, but he could do those Michigan goals like crazy. You know, the, the Michigan where they pick it up yeah. and they have a cross dog goal. Yeah. So Beck's on fire. He's like just stoning them. And all of a sudden, Portland player pulls off a Michigan. And Beck comes across and takes away everything except about like an except inch that, or two like above his two, shoulder. Two inches, yeah. Yeah. I swear the player put the puck on its side to get a buy him and, and put it in. And, you know, the, it's in Portland. The arena erupts, goes crazy. 
And Beck didn't make the next two saves that he had the opportunity to make. And then, and so when I talked to him, because he calls me after every game, when I talked to him after the game, I was like, were you able to remain in the athlete mindset after that save not made on the lacrosse style attempt? And he's like, Pete, normally, yes. He goes, but my mind immediately went to, I'm going to be on ESPN, TSN, Fox Sports for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> yes. And, and, and no, he, here, here's how come it's so important to be able to deal with mental time travel and be in the moment because our mind, our mind is designed to really just focus on one thing at a time. And as soon as we have two things, it's juggling back and forth. It's going back yeah. and forth between one and the other. And if there's three, one is dropped. One is dropped. And, and so, so you think of it, a goalie doesn't make the save. They're getting ready, ready for the faceoff. His mind is on what just happened. It's on the puck. Now he's looking at the time. Well, that's three things right there. And he's thinking, when's this game going to be over? And, and then that's when goaltenders really, really struggle, which is the other thing that I always say. And, and I get a little bit of, uh, I get a little bit of resistance sometime with this one, but I say there is absolutely no need for a goalie to ever look at the clock in a game. And, and the only reason I say that is because as a goalie, your job is the same, whether it's a minute into the game, 10 minutes into the second period or two minutes left in the game, your job's exactly the same. Yeah. And, and so there's always questions that will say, well, well, what if it's near the end of the game and, and uh, it's the game's almost over, you might have to go to the bench. Well, I'm sure your team can call you to the bench. Mm -hmm. Like that's like, generally what they do. And that's what they're going to do anyways, right? There's no need you looking back. Okay. 20, because it's just, it, yeah. And then the other thing is, and I really think coaches, if there's any coaches listening to do your goalies a favor, I challenge you to change something that has been done for generations. And what that is, is the coaches tell the goalies to, with five seconds left in the other team's penalty, what, what, what do they tell the goalies to do, Jack? Bang their sticks. Bang their sticks. Bang their sticks. Now, aren't there 15 or 20 other guys on the team plus the coaches and the assistant coaches that can yeah. bang their sticks on the boards, which would be louder? And with the cost of goalie sticks this, these days, do you really want to be banging that stick on the ice? And shorthanded, you know, shorthanded goals are a thing. And there's a lot of goalies that, which leads into another thing that is super important that, that, I, that I work with guys on that they have challenges with is going to the fan mindset. And do, do you know what I mean by fan mindset? I, I, I believe so. Yeah, it's just like thinking like a fan. So, yeah. so your, your team's on the power play and the, and the puck's in your end and you're thinking, now you're looking at the clock. There's only 20 seconds left. You shouldn't be looking at the clock in the first place, but now yeah. looking at the clock, there's only 20 seconds left. Get it down the other end. Just Get do, it down do the other something. end. And do all something. Sudden, yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's turned over. And now there's a breakaway, shorthand breakaway coming towards you. Well, that's too late for the mind. The mind is now behind yeah. the play. Whereas when your team had the puck, if like I, I, uh, an Olympic, uh, Kane Olympic goaltender that I work with, she had a game the other day and we were talking about the athlete mindset she's like yes she goes here's what i'm here's what i'm saying to myself i crave for our team to give the puck away i crave for our team to take penalties right so 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 if that player had the puck and she and, and kristen kristen campbell's her name kristen's in goal she is like give it away give it away give it away because when you say that the mind automatically automatically without you doing anything it runs a movie of it be, being given away and the puck player coming in and you making that save right? Like yeah. the mind, like the brain, the mind is the most powerful computer on the planet. You just gotta like, like the challenges older, there's no, people are not given a user's manual on how to use it. And that's really what I work with them on is that like things like that. Yeah. That, that's a good point too, because like once you turn that puck over, like you, like you just have that, that already like movie going through your head like that they're coming coming out of the breakaway and you're going to make the save like it's just already there because you're you're already prepared for that and you know what to do and you're not behind the play like you said yes yeah exactly exactly yeah so so that, that that's a good thing another thing too which i do a lot with with goaltenders which i did i've done for 
20 years, like one of my first, like I, I had a training center way back in the early nineties. And one of my first students was, was Robbie Tallis, who was playing in the Western hockey league at the time. He's like the nicest guy ever, nicest guy ever. And so it's the first time I ever did. And, and Ron, Robbie was a little bit of a Guinea pig for me. Um, I learned how to create an anchor on people, like, like where, where I would get them to, to feel in a peak state of confidence and then do a unique movement. So they connect the two. So when you need it in the game, you do that unique movement. And I remember doing that with Robbie and conditioning that into Rob and then watching him play a game on TSM, which is like the Canadian ESPN yeah. and seeing him before the puck is dropped, do that anchor. And, and he was phenomenal that night. I'm like, wow, this works, this works. And that's something that I kind of held on to me for a long time when I wasn't focusing specifically on the mindset for goaltenders, but I reactivated it a few years ago. So there's an article that just came out on in goal mag uh, with Dylan Ferguson, one of my clients where I'm taking him through uh, an anchoring session and a few other guys as well too. And it just shows him there's a really good video on there to see him fire off his anchor uh, before the pucks drop. And he does the same thing every time. The key is it can't be a superstition. It's got to be done on purpose. Yeah, I think I think that's a that's a big one uh, for doing something on purpose and like having meaning to it, and then just doing a superstition. Like superstitions, like if you don't do that, like oh, you're not you could have a bad game and like it gets in your head. But like just do it on purpose and have a meaning towards it. Like it's a whole different thing, and like you you got you have to do it just to stay in the game. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Love it. Yeah, yeah, love absolutely. It. And like I love like the the anchor like term anchor because like especially like, like a lot of the goalies that I've had on here, like they have like anchor words that they say to like, like stop the next puck, like one shot at a time, one puck at a time. Like mine, mine is I'll put my, I'll put battle and compete on the back of my, on the back of my sticks on like the backside of the blade. And like, that's my anchor. Like when everything isn't going, like when everything's going, like it's chaotic, like games get chaotic. Sometimes it's just battle and compete, battle and compete. And you're just, out there competing and battling for every puck, every sight line, every like know where the players are. And it's just, it brings you back to the present no matter what. And you could just, it like centers your focus. Love it. Yep. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. So like when, when goalies like transition from level to level from like youth to high school, AAA to juniors, juniors to college or junior pro, like what are some of the similarities you recognize when it comes to the mindset of goalies, whether it be positive or negative and like, how do you think those, how do you think those thought, those thoughts change, especially if they are negative? Like, how do you think they change it from negative to a positive? Um, well, example of maybe some negative thoughts they could be getting if they are going up, up a level, right? It doesn't matter if it's from the American Hockey League to the National Hockey League or Pee Wee to Bantam. Uh, it could be looking at those players and, like, oh, wow, those guys are really good. Yeah. As opposed to, to recognizing that those players are just like me. They just, they're just there already. There's really is no difference. And I think it just comes out, the guys that have a lot of success when, when they advance and move up levels are the guys that continue to focus on the controllables, on what they can control physically on the ice physically off the ice, mentally on the ice and mentally off the ice as well too. And continue to work on getting better in those three areas, getting better in the physical, like the technical on the ice, the physical and getting better on the mental as well too. I find the guys that focus on the controllables for those, they're, they're the ones that transition the easiest as well. Another key thing too, because I've, I've had really good goalies uh, sometimes have challenges is when they move up a level, there's a new group of guys or, or girls for any females that, 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 are, that are listening. And usually I find in any group, there is a, there, there's a core that is totally 100% committed. They are your, your keeners, right? Yeah. They're your keeners. Then there's kind of the middle core. And then there's like the, the, the bottom core, which could be almost on their way out, are like the negative Nellies, so to speak. I'm not sure if you find that, but normally that, that's what you yeah. see on a team. So the key is to make sure that when you get brought up, you're, you're with those keeners, right? And, and try, try to recognize who they are. And you spend as little as time possible with the negative Nellies because they are going to be there. And I've seen, 
I've seen clients get caught up with them and without even knowing it. And it's the whole thing of, you know, you become who you hang around with. Your thoughts change, your attitudes change, your, your actions then start to change as well too. So it's super important to recognize that. And kind of the easiest way, the easiest way, and this is once again, when I go back to that summer where Donnie Mean gave me that, that advice that, that I didn't listen to is hang around with guys who are either where you want to be or on their way there. Yeah. Or females it's, if you're if you're female. Yeah. It's kind of, it's like just like everyone says, like surround yourself with good people. Like same thing with like at with with athletes. Surround yourself with people you want to be with, you want to be where you at the level you want to play at. Cause like there's also there's been times where it's like like last summer or last January, like I like I want to be in the pros in the next year or so. So like I want to surround myself with those pros that are playing at that level. And like, that's what I've been doing just because just to see like everything they do and like it, it pays off on you because you're there so often you're practicing with them, training with them. Like it really does take, take yourself to the next level, especially with like how they, how they prepare, what they, what they do on the ice and like their pregame and postgame, like stretching routines, like all that. 100%. Yep. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, what are like the biggest and most noticeable challenges you see pro college and junior goalies face specifically? And like, how do you, how do you think they overcome them? One thing could be every once in a while, there's a, a negative coach or a coach who has some negative moments. I've had uh, one goalie where, where is his, his coach, his coach turned to him. After, you know, he, he made a save that, you know, he felt he should, should have made the save, but he was, he was learned to, I taught him to forget about it in the game and just yeah. move on. Like you can't do your video analysis in the game, save that for after the game. And well, the coach didn't have the same philosophy, right? So he, he, he walks up to him in between periods and he looks at him and very intimidating coach and, you know, long NHL career was a good player. I'm not going to say who it was really hard worker. People are trying to figure out who is he? Um, there might've been some connection to Chicago at some point. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> with one of his brothers maybe anyway so that this player walks up to the goalie and says no can it can i swear on here or not yeah go for it it's not a big swear he said no horseshit goals that's all he said to him but he's just said it with such a negative tonality and yeah. and mean facial expression that man the, 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 the talk about anxiety the goalie called me after the game he's like i can't get that out of my head right i just can't get that image out of my head and so so what I did was I said, okay, we went through a little. So this is what you do if you have a negative coach, right? Here's yeah. what I want you to do. I want to picture your negative coach. Let's say he's six foot tall. Well, I want you to picture him shrinking down to where he's about 12 inches tall. See him now, okay? He's like a really tiny body, maybe this bigger head and this tiny body. And take a look at his ears. See his ears, make his ears like green. See them growing, his ears are growing. And when he talks, he talks, imagine he talks like he just sucked on helium. Right. And you hear his voice really, really squeaky as yeah. he's talking and and replay. So we actually did it where he replayed what the coach said like that. And that basically scratched the software in his head for that negative uh, negative memory. And he was fine. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not try I'm not trying to give up poor shit goals like it, sometimes yeah. it just happens, but I'm not trying to give up bad goals like that. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know, another, another key thing too, that, and whether this isn't just college junior or pros, but this is all goaltenders. And I really focus on the language because once again, it just comes back to when we talk about anxiety, it's all pictures in the head. So if you're about to go out there and you have a coach that says to you, Jack, whatever you do, don't let them score. Right. Or don't give up any bad goals now. Like what images get that, that those images are going to go through your head, right? A lot, right. A lot of bad goals or somehow, or some, somehow they get the pucks get through me. Like that's, that's, what's going to go right to my head. Yeah. Don't let in the first one. Don't let in the, like, like it's funny what coaches will say. Now they're trying to be, they're trying to do the right thing. But one thing that I think if, if any coaches are listening or any parents, if you want to re relieve anxiety, bring it down use positive language with your goaltenders and all that is. And, and there's a video I, I can find it for you and send it to you at Carrie Price after the game. 
it's a game against Tampa in the playoffs, not last year, but like a, a few years ago when they played Tampa in the playoffs. And Montreal didn't play that well. They didn't win. They're interviewing Carey Price. He's, he's obviously not in like the best mood ever. Yeah. And, you know, reporters ask the, the meanest questions sometimes. And they're like, and, and the interview's over. And there's one reporter who already asked this stupid question. And, and Carey's just, and, and he starts, he, he's like, hey, Carey, Carey. And you see Carey turn around and leave, like he's leaving. And the reporter still blurts out the question. Do, do you, and the, and the question is, do you think, do you think, you think you could have stopped that one? Like, he's like something like that. Right. Or yeah. Or do, do you think, do you think you could have stopped that one? And and Kerry turns around. He's like, I feel like I can stop every puck. Like I feel so that's a powerful image in the head yeah. but earlier on in the interview when Kerry's talking, he didn't say the goal I let in the goal that they scored. You know what he said? The save I didn't make. Because once again, it does two things. Number one is your brain does not know the difference between what's real and what you imagine. It forms images in your head and it doesn't recognize the word don't or not. So, so what happens if I say don't let in a goal, you're still going to imagine letting in a goal. Yeah. But if I say don't make a save, you're, you're going to imagine making a save. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, so Carrie just said, I didn't make the save. So the brain still imagines him making the save. So, so goalies just talk in terms of, I made the save or I didn't make the save, get rid of, they scored on me. It's such a negative image. You're just, you're just building up that negative imprinting in your brain. When you do that, get rid of saying, let in a goal. Do you really ever let in a goal? Like, you, like it's like, it's like you're allowing them like, or, yeah. or I allowed three today. Like, no, I didn't make three saves. And by, by, by saying I didn't make the save, not only is the better pitcher in your head, but it's it's a better form of responsibility too, because it puts the onus on you. Now, it doesn't mean it's your fault, but as a goalie, to be the best, you want to continue to get better. And how do you get better? By taking responsibility. And so, but by saying that, so 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 from now on, so Jack, I got a personal challenge to you. From now on, you're not allowed to say. I let in a goal. You're not allowed to say they scored on me. All you can say is I made the save or I didn't make the save. Okay. Are challenge accepted? Yeah. yeah challenge accepted. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I, wait, I, I, I'm waiting to see the video. I want to see the video on the interview after you send, make sure to send it to me. I, I, I definitely will. And like, I, that, that's an interesting point because I, I never thought of it like that, but now that you did, like it makes total sense. And like, cause it brings on like that negative, uh, that negative, uh, feedback negative video in your head negative thoughts like but like when you say i didn't make the save or like i did make the save like that's that changes everything because like you're not saying you let in one in or like you allowed one in like you said and like you're not purposely letting people score like it's just it brings a different tone to it and like i i really like that and like the challenge the challenge is definitely accepted now awesome i love it i love it yeah absolutely it's so like for uh, I know before this we before uh, that last question we had, we talked about the anchor the anchor points like what how important is it to have those key anchor words and language while in net to help you become that successful goalie and like have you have you stay in that mindset that that athlete's mindset I I, I think it, I think it's very important because when you're in a game you play your best when you're not thinking. Right. When you're not, yeah. when you're out of the analytical mode and you're just, you're, you're not thinking at all, you're just in the moment. And the only focus is on the puck and the play, the puck and the play, the puck, that that's it, the puck and the play. And, but what happens is we're, we're human beings and, and we will sometimes you'll, you'll be, folks will be on the puck and the play. And then, then a negative thought will come in, but you're a sieve or something like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like a negative thought will come in the yeah. brain. And so, so you got to be able to deal with stuff like that. You got to be able to let it go and just go back to your, your, your anchor word, like power. Like, like when I take my goalies through, through a visualization at the end, I, I bring them up the, the, the elevator where they're merging with their future self or a goalie they want to be most like. And, and, I, and I anchor it in. Like you feel like you can make every save. Power. You feel like you can stop every puck. Power. You are a great goalie. Power. So, so we go through that. And so in the game, and at the end, I'm like, if you need to recall this feeling at any time, simply say or think the word power. And so in the game, that's what they'll do. They'll just boom, power. And they'll all of a sudden they'll feel, okay, I feel like I can stop every puck. 
And so anchors are very important. Now, do you know, do you know how anchors started? Do you know who was like the, the, the kind of king of the anchors? Who, who was? It was uh, Pavlov, Pavlov's dogs. So, really? so Pavlov, ha he had a dog and he rang a bell and the dog did nothing. And then what he did was he had a dog, he brought out a big juicy steak and the dog would, would salivate and he rang the bell when it would salivate. Then the next day, same thing, brought the, the dog brought out a steak, the dog would salivate. And then he did that a few days in a row. And then he said, forget the steak. He brought the dog, he just rang the bell and the dog salivated with no steak. That's exactly what happened. So, so when I'm working with goaltenders, the, the getting them in the peak state of confidence, that is like bringing out the steak. That's bringing out the steak. And then that physical movement I get them connected to, that's like ringing the bell. So eventually they can just do that movement, which is like ringing the bell. Instead of salivating though, they're gonna feel totally confident. Yeah, I, I really like the way that you went with that. Cause like, just like to have that powerful movement and that anchor, like, and bring those two together. Like it just brings you into the present, into the moment. Like it just really like goes hand in hand, especially like with the, with the dog example, with the stake and the bell, like it just, it, it all fits like right in, right where you want it to. Yeah, you got it. You got it. And, and by, by doing, continue to do that and work on these things. You know, goalies just, they start to get to a rhythm. They start to get to a flow. And now, now they're focused on their controllables and they become unfazable, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So like, I want to dive into the athlete's mindset a little here. It's like, what exactly is the athlete's mindset? And like, how are, like, what are the differences from between a fan mindset and then like the athlete's mindset? So, so a fan mindset, I bring it back to, if you can imagine, if you go on YouTube and you put in a video and it is Patrick Steffen misses empty net and, and you watch that on YouTube. So there's a game, I, I don't know if it was in the nineties, I think, and it was the Edmonton Oilers versus Dallas stars. Dallas was up by one and there was like 15 seconds left in the game. The Edmonton defenseman has a puck in his corner and the member Edmonton is down by one. He goes to carry it out of his zone and he turns it over to Patrick Steffen on the blue line. Well, now Patrick Steffen has a breakaway on an empty net. And now there's like 12 seconds left, 11 seconds left. And at that moment, every player on Dallas went into the fan mindset. They're like, we're up by one. Patrick's going to score. We've got this. Who cares? Let's celebrate. And just like if you were a Dallas star fan, you're like, yes, yes, yes. He's going to score. Whereas here's what happened. He gets close to the net and the puck hits a weird bump on the ice. It hits a weird bump and it just throws him off. And, and he's like, what? Because he, he was, instead of shooting, he wanted to make sure he was scoring. He's going to push it right in the net. Yeah. But it hits a bump and it goes the other way. He falls. The puck misses the net. Edmonton gets the puck. Everyone on Dallas is celebrating still. Feeds it up ice. Edmonton scores. They tie the game up. So if Edmonton or if Dallas was in the, the athlete mindset, they would have been thinking, you're going to miss, you're going to miss, miss. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And, and if he scores, great. But if he misses, then they're ready. Dallas still ends up on top in regulation time that game. If, if they were in the, so, so the athlete mindset is the opposite of a fan mindset. So when, when your team has a pocket, I remember when I would play, my demon had the pocket, be like, get it out, get it out, get it out. Or he'd take a bad penalty. I'd be like, what are you doing taking that penalty? Or the ref would make a bad call. I'd be like, that ref is an idiot. Like, that's just acting like a fan. Or we'd be down the other end. I'd like, score. Like, you guys can't shoot the puck. What are you doing? Like, you should be scoring. And, and so that is all fan mindset stuff. You want to replace it with, if your demon has a puck, it's like, turn it over. I'm ready. And you're scanning for threats. So you're dialed in. You're ahead of the play. If... The ref makes a, makes a, a bad call. You, you don't care. You're like, yes, it's an opportunity for me as a goalie to shine because that's what it is. It's an opportunity. My team's down the far end. There's, and I remember Beck called me after a game when they were up 2-1 on Spokane. Spokane had an, uh, their goalie pulled. Tri-Cities was down the far end. They had an empty net, and their, their player was pretty close to scoring on empty net. And then it got turned over. Spokane came back, and Beck stopped. And so when Beck called me after the game, I'm like, what was going through your mind? when the player was on the empty net down the far end. And Beck was like, I was imagining him turn it over, 
turning it over. And that's exactly what happened. And then they came down and Beck made the save. So he remained in the athlete mindset. Yeah. I, I love that. Cause like the, like every, everyone gets like that fan fan mindset, but like, especially when you're playing, like you don't want to have that mindset. You want to have like, I, I like how you like say, like, just turn it over, turn it over. Cause you have that, that memory in your head and you have that, that video in your mind that you're going to make that next save. You're going to make that save after that turnover. Like it just really like goes all together. And it's just, it's really, I, I really like the concept yeah. of that. I'm going to, I'm going to have to try that more often now when I next, next time I have a game, which is tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Do it, do it. You got to let me know how it goes. So athlete mindset. So I always, I always talk when my goal is calling me before a game, I always go, what, what's, what's our mental strategy for today. And they'll talk about athlete mindset. Right. So, so I, I challenge you to bring that into your game. And then the next is what I call the three mental zones and to, to keep it simple, because I don't want you thinking in your game. Last thing I want you to do is think, yeah. hey, what is it? Mental zone one yeah. and two. Boom. Right. So here's what I want you to do. Two things to keep it simple. Treat every whistle the same. Every time the whistle goes, you think, what's my job? When the whistle goes, your job is to rest. You can turn your focus on yourself for a moment. When the whistle goes, my job is to rest, relax, revitalize. Take a deep breath. That's it. And then for a moment, I tell my goalies, I'm like, stand tall, like the most confident person in the building. And then when the puck's getting closer to being dropped, that's when you fire off your anchor. You get to your ultimate hype level. You get to a 10 or 10 in confidence. And you remind yourself that your flashlight is just on the puck in the play. Zane McIntyre, one, one of my, one of my uh, clients that I work with, he's in, he just went to, he's, been, he's a free agent. He just went to Arizona. I think a few days ago. And anyway, so, so Zane basically will do three things before the face off. You'll notice him shuffle his feet. That's to get to his ultimate hype level. If he needs to bring his hype up, he'll shuffle him faster. If he needs to bring it down, he'll shuffle him slower. Then you'll see him put his hands together, elbows back. That's to get to a 10 or a 10 in confidence. Then he'll open his eyes wide open. That's to get to his uh, flashlight, his focus just on the puck and the play. Yeah, I I will for sure have to incorporate the the three mind the mind the mental zones for sure, and I'm I'll I'll definitely let you know how how it goes. Tomorrow. Yeah, send me a message. Send me a message on Instagram. Let me know how you did. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to get into another aspect of like the the mental like aspect like or I want to actually go into journaling a little bit here. Like journaling is another like big success fa factor that I've I've heard people ha I've heard goaltenders say like. What, so like, what should goaltenders be journaling about and how often should they do it? And like, what are like the key, like factors that go into journaling? Great question. Um, well, and with that, what I've, I've created a platform that's like the goalie mindset Academy and on it, it's got the whole, the tools for the night, the day, be the night before practice to journal. So before your practice, so it gets them to come up with one thing that they want to get better at. It gets them to visualize, run the movie, getting better at that skill. So you, and you let it, you know, you let it permeate in your subconscious mind overnight when you go to sleep and then you have a phenomenal practice. Then after practice, you, you got to go through, and this comes back to university of Chicago study in your, in your uh, hometown there on the basketball players, the 20, I call it the 23% rule. Yeah. Have you heard of that study? No, I, I've, I've, I think I've heard about it a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was done in Europe as well, too. And so basically by one group of basketball players, they didn't let them touch a basketball, go near a basketball court for 30 days. Then they retested their free throw, free, free throw percentage, and they improved 23% just through visualizing. Now, the problem with most goalies is after they have a practice or after they play a game, usually what's going on in their head is the things they didn't do well, the mistakes they made, the, the pucks they didn't save. And so if that's the first thing you're imagining after you play, you're actually getting 23% worse because you're rerunning that movie in your head again and again and again. And whereas I, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm doing a seminar in Vancouver and, and a goalie coach was in the audience and, and he was Carey Price's goalie coach in Tri-City in the Western Hockey League. And he's like, this is unbelievable because usually, and this is what the goalie coach said, his name was Ron. He said, uh, Normally, when I ask goalies, how did you do after they play, they'll talk about the saves they didn't make, right? The pucks they didn't stop, and they'll, they'll go over. I, you know, even though they stopped 40 or 42, they'll say, well, 
I should have made the save on that one or that one. Whereas Carey Price was the opposite. You know, maybe we'd have a game where I didn't think he played that well. And I'd ask him how he did. And all he would talk about was the saves that he made. So after every game, while other goalies were getting 23% worse, Carey Price was getting 23% better. And it, it's obviously showed in his, in his results as a goaltender throughout his career. Yeah, for sure. That's a, that's another good point. Cause you all, I've all, I always hear goalies looking back at the goals that they've, that they didn't save. And like, I, I had that, I've done that too, but like knowing it from like this side now to look at the saves, like I always talk about like the saves I made, but like, I also talk about the saves I didn't make. And it's just, I, I now realize that how important it is to talk about the saves and just get that 23% better instead of getting, getting sidetracked and going that negative 23% worse. Yes. Yes. You got it. You got it. Yeah. So, 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 so continue. Yeah, do, so when you're done your practice, write down all the successes you had and then run the movie of them. That's the first thing to do. First thing to do is to do that. And then I got a specific, uh, and with the practices in, in game journals, what, what it created is where the goalies go through and they mark off the levels that they were at. Like, where was my height level today? Where was my confidence level? Where's my puck tracking on a scale of one to 10? Where's my, my focus, my flashlight on the puck and the play of scale. So they mark them off. And then what it does, it tracks it. So you can go, you can go and you can check out and you can say, okay, well, the majority of my practices, I'm a 10 out of 10, but there's some of them where I'm like a six out of 10. And then you can, you can figure out what can we do? Cause really those are your mental performance indicators. Yeah. And you want to make sure because th those, they will a lot of times determine your performance. So you want to make sure that your confidence is, is a 10 out of 10. It's confidence is something that you can create no matter what happens around you. You can always create your confidence. Yeah, ab absolutely. I love, I love that. And like all the, all the information you've given us so far. So I'll transition uh, your, your books a little bit here. So like you've, you've, uh, you created, you're the author of Goalie Mindset Secrets. So like what drove you to, to decide to write that book and like, how did it, how did this start to finish process take you? And like what went on throughout that process? Well, I, I really just wanted to get it out there. I wanted to uh, people to be able to have access to, to the information, right? Cause not everyone can afford to, to, to work with me. Uh, and so that's a way that people can still get, people can still get the information. Um, and so that was the main, the main reason. And I just sat down and just, uh, I actually talked and then just, just typed it out and uh, went back and forth and boom, before you know, it was a, when a finished product and, but a, a really great program for like the, any, like every goaltender that I think should do this. I've had lots of pros that do this program three, three, three or four times a year. It's called the goalie mindset power 30 day program. It is such a good program. It's got 30 days. There's an audio every day and there's a workbook with it. And it's got different key topics like developing pro goalie beliefs. Because you think of it, the guys that are in the National Hockey League have different beliefs than guys that are playing at different levels, yeah. right? About themselves. And so, so, so it, it takes you through, you know, how to develop those beliefs. Uh, it's got the confidence, it's got the, the anchoring in it. It takes you through an anchoring session of, of Goalies that every two weeks, they will listen to that segment every two weeks just to make sure that they're, they're, they're nailing down their anchor. Uh, there's lots of great stuff on there. How to deal with the negative coach, um, you know, the whole pregame preparation and, and all that good stuff. So that, yeah, that's Goalie Mindset Power. That's a good one. So there's Goalie Mindset Secrets, which is a book, and Goalie Mindset Power. And by the way, the journals, the journals are available on Amazon as well, too, if you don't want to do them through the Goalie Mindset Academy, right? You can do a, you can see the Goalie Success Mastery Journal. You can buy it off Amazon or the Practice Mastery Journal as well, too. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Well, I'll definitely promote that stuff uh, when this episode comes out. So uh, while also writing the books, like you, like you talked about, you created the Goalie Mindset Power Program, and you've worked with pros such as like Jeff Glass, Dylan Ferguson, Beck Warm, among others, like... What, what is it about like that program that gives goaltenders the edge to success? And like, what's it, what's it been like just working with guys like Jeff, Dylan, and Beck? Um, I think the, the key part of that program that gives them the edge to success is it's not just about their, their, their game performance. It's also about a career, right? Because a goaltender goes through a lot of ups and downs in a career. Like, what happens if you're sitting out and I have clients that have gone through this where they're sitting out for three months in a season, they're, they're, they're free agents, even though they're good enough to play, they're just not signed. 
Yeah. And so, so how to deal with things like that as well too. And, and you look at minor hockey, there's sometimes goalies give up because they get cut a few times. Right. So, so there, yeah. there's a, there's a segment in there about the, the persistence mentality and how to, how, how to deal with that. And, and uh, I tell a story in there about uh, it's a gentleman, his name's Lance, Lance Mays. And, and I remember work, working with Lance and, and he gets, he goes to try out for a junior team. They cut him. He calls me, expects me to feel uh, what is empathy. And I was like, yes, that's awesome. Lance, I'm glad you got cut. Who's next. What's the next team you're going to? And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, you, wh what did you get better at? How did you get better at that? Right. Doesn't mean you weren't good enough to make it, but you can still learn and get better. So he went, he got cut from like six or seven teams in a row, made it actually di didn't make a junior A team that year. Played junior B, got brought up halfway through the year. Next year was an all-star in the BC Hockey League and got a full ride to Alaska. And then played pro uh, after that. So, so it, things like that, right? How to deal with with being cut from a team and just just continue going. Like, do, do you know the story? I know, I know. Uh, rest in peace, the former Chicago Blackhawk, Ray Emery. Right, yeah. Ray. Ray, when he was and Eli Wilson, who was his goalie coach with the Ottawa Senators and and outside of uh, the National Hockey League as well too. He like told me the story of, of Ray Emery, where Ray, when he was, he was trying out for junior, he got cut by so many junior teams and he was, he was in junior C gets, he's down to like the, the worst team in junior C in Ontario. And he hasn't even made the team. And they say the, the coach said, there's a men's league game tonight. I'm going to play you guys both in the men's league game and whoever does better, I'm going to keep. And Ray just happened to do better that game. If not, you may have never ever seen Ray Emery yeah. play in the National Hockey League, but he just he just loved the game and just just persisted. So that, yeah. that that that's a key thing from that program. So what I've seen from those guys is uh, is the buy-in, like Jeff Glass, like phenomenal. There's there's a little video I think it's on my YouTube channel, and uh, where Jeff talks about he talks about what we what we went through, and it's just it's a it's a short little video. But he says, you know, he says, I, I, I said, because uh, what, what happened was he was playing in Rockford and Cor or Crawford, Crawford, Corey Crawford got hurt. And they brought up the other goalie, uh, Barube, I think. I think they brought up Barube. And Jeff is texts me, can you chat? And he's like, man, I can't believe it. I don't know why they didn't bring me up. I'm working so hard, blah, blah, blah. And it kind of, and I'm like, Jeff? Let, let's put together a 30 day plan for you to be a Chicago Blackhawk. Right. Yeah. And, and so, so, so in the video, he's like, he said, he's like, well, Pete, it doesn't really work that way. Right. <laughs> and I said, I know let's put together a 30 day plan for you to be a Chicago Blackhawk. This was on, I think it was December 1st or something like that. And December 26th or 7th, he gets brought up to Chicago and plays his first National Hockey League game ever. It was a pretty amazing story, pretty amazing story. But on that 30-day plan, you know, we mocked out a whole bunch of controllables that, that he can do and put the, put, put the focus on. And so that's one of the key things is the whole persistence. A lot of guys give up. I can remember a goaltender who when he, when he this is before I started training. Well, I, I was training goalies at the Okanagan Hockey School, but I wasn't working with them mentally. And uh, there's a goal, there's a, the pro there is a buddy of mine, I played against him in the Western Hockey League. His name was Troy Gamble. You probably never heard of that name. And uh, Troy, Troy played for the Vancouver Canucks. And I remember him, he had such a, such a great attitude in the summer. And then, was it a year later, he's playing in the International Hockey League for their International Hockey League team. There's the IHL back then, yeah. which there isn't anymore. And I remember talking to him, he's like, oh, it's just tough. It's just tough. The guys are under contract. It's just, and I was like, I didn't say anything, but when I thought about it after, I thought the biggest difference I noticed is his mentality and his, and his attitude. And, and that is everything. And so that's what that goalie mindset power does. It really gives you, if you do the program, it gives you that, that pro mentality. It gives you that pro mentality and that, that, that belief, that, that drive to just continue on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love everything you said there and like it, just proves like there's a lot of value that you could learn from getting from getting cut like like over the like I went to a 
train I went to a camp in uh like late summer and I got I was like one of the last cuts there but like I just took took it as like a opportunity to get better like like real right now like I feel a lot better than I did like I thought I was the feeling the best I was like at camp but now like I since I got cut like I put in the work and like I'm ready for that opportunity whenever it comes because like I know that I'm a lot better and like I can handle that adversity when it ha when it comes to me and it just it it's a lot to handle at first but like once you get to like that athlete's mindset and like you know that you just gotta keep got gotta like put your head down and work work again like not not dwell on it and just think of different opportunities that come and just try to get those opportunities whenever you can yep love it love it yeah absolutely so i have a few more questions for you before uh, we let you go so uh, what are some other tips for goaltenders looking to get to that next level that we haven't discussed yet um other tips for goaltenders looking to get the next level have that clear picture very very clear picture of the team that they want to play on and make sure they're looking at it uh, every morning every uh, every night before they before they go to go to bed as well too uh, just, just have that clear picture of their future self. I know on the, the goalie mindset Academy, I got a segment where it's, it's a visualization when they wake up in the morning before they go to bed and they're actually visualizing their future self playing on the team that they want to play on. And what that does, what that does is it's like an airplane. So when, when you're on a plane, that plane, the pilots put in the exact longitude and latitude of where that plane is going. So let's say you're going from from O'Hara in Chicago to Hawaii. You're going to Hawaii, Honolulu, the airport in Honolulu. Well, when you get on that plane before it takes off, number one, you know it's going to Hawaii or you wouldn't have gotten on that yeah. plane. I don't, know, I don't know a lot of people that get on a plane if they don't know where it's going. Yeah. Right? You know where it is. The pilots know where it's going. But what happens when that plane takes off and it's in the air, it's off track the majority of the time. There's winds, there's rains, but because it has a clear picture of where it's going, it continues to adjust and it eventually gets there. Most goalies operate their goalie career without that clear picture. And what I mean by that is I'll ask goalies, I'll go, what do you see for yourself in the future as a goalie? Like, let's say a goalie is a, a bantam or a midget goaltender or a junior goaltender. They'll say, well, I want want to play college or I want to play pro I'll say okay so so number one if, if if that's the only time they actually say that then or the only time they really imagine that then there is no clear destination of where they're going with their career yeah but even if they say pro I want to be a pro well that's like getting on a plane and saying I'm going to go somewhere in Europe but I don't know exactly where. So, so I say, well, you want to be a pro, what league? They're like NHL. Okay, you want to play in the NHL? What team? And you, know, you, 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 can't, you can't pick your team, but your mind needs to know specifically, specifically. Yeah. And that way it'll go to work and it'll be on your side. So college, so college. Some, uh, you know, one of my, my clients in the uh, SJ wants to play, you know, wants to play college. So I was like, got to narrow it down. University of North Dakota is where he wants to play. So when we do our visualization, he's seen himself clearly playing for UND. And that way the brain recognizes opportunities. And once again, I go back to New Jersey when, when I was, when I was drafted, when I was drafted by New Jersey and I, I go back to, you've seen the movie Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Okay. So so the end of the, I love that movie. At the end of the movie, Dumb and Dumber, this was me when, 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 I, when I played goal. At the end of the movie, Dumb and Dumber, Jim Carrey and, and his buddy, they're, they're walking side by side. They're looking at each other. Woe is me. You know, we never get any opportunities. You know, life's not fair. They're complaining. And, and a bus pulls up beside them. And it says, hey, and these, these girls in bikinis, they stick their heads out of the windows. They say, hey, we're looking for two guys to join us on our, on our tour and oil us down every single day, right? And Jim Karen and his buddy look at each other. They're all excited. And so Jim look, looks over to the girls on the bus. He says, girls, you're in luck. There's a town about three miles that way. You're sure to find two guys there. Then the bus takes off 
And he's like, looks at his buddy and he's like, what are we nuts? They chase the bus, they bang on it. It stops. They, 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 they go to the front of the bus like they're going to get on. The doors open. And, and, and Jim Carrey says, man, sorry, ladies, my friend's an idiot. The town's down that way. And he points the other direction and the bus takes off. And then, then he looks at his friend and he's like, when are we ever going to get a break? Right? When are we ever going to get a break? And I go back to, maybe this is a good kind of time to, to end off the podcast is because is I go back to when I got drafted by New Jersey, that was me. That was, that was like huge opportunity, huge opportunity and showed up totally unprepared. When am I going to get a break? Yeah. Right. And to me, there's breaks happening all the time. You just got to show up prepared, be in the moment and do your job. Yeah, ab- absolutely. It, it goes a long way when you think, think about it like that. And just like, that's, that's a great, those are great tips uh, to end this podcast on, but to, to really end this thing off, like where can people find you if they have any questions, want to get started with one of your programs or just want to connect with you? Yeah, you can go to uh, petefry.net, P-E-T-E-F-R-Y.net. Think of a goalie.net. And uh, that's where, you, or you can, uh, I think on Insta, what's my handle on Insta? Goalie underscore mindset, I think. Yeah, goalie underscore mindset. Goalie underscore mindset as well too. Uh, Twitter, how do you know what my, my Twitter is? What's my Twitter? Uh, you, you can email me at petefry at goaliemindsettraining.com. That's, an, that's, an, that's another way. And uh, yeah, I forget my, what's my Twitter handle? I don't even know what it is. Uh, at Pete Fry underscore mindset is Twitter as well too. At Pete Fry underscore mindset. So you can reach me, reach me there and uh, send me a message. Let me know how you're doing as a goaltender, what you need help on. And uh, I work, I do work with goalies uh, uh, one-on-one or in small groups on Zoom as well as the Goalie Mindset Academy, which is really, really good. And uh, for, for goaltenders, got all the tools for your success. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll, be for, I'll for sure be able to put that on the, in the description when this episode is posted. But I, I love this episode and learned a ton, and I'm sure everyone else will learn a ton. But uh, Pete, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time, and I look forward to, to watching your work come come a long way for the rest of you for the rest of the way thanks jack appreciate it buddy great great being on with you yeah you too